Well, the return of the hostages held in Gaza is the top concern for many Israelis. And hostage families are pressuring the government to negotiate with Hamas for their release. Others are calling for eliminating the terrorist group altogether. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has the story. As a security guard at the Nova Festival, Eitan Moore saved many people before Hamas terrorists kidnapped him. He just celebrated his 24th birthday in captivity. Eitan is a year. He, he could escape, but he chose to, to help people, to save people. Eitan's father, Svika Moore, tells CBN News they've received two reports from Israeli intelligence that his son is alive. One before the first deal in the first 50 days after October 7, and the other one was from one of the hostages who was released. Uh, he said to the intelligence that he saw Eitan in a tunnel, and they sat together and uh, speak. Shortly after October 7th, Moore felt the need to support a strong military effort rather than a deal with Hamas for the return of his son and other hostages. That's why he helped start the Tikva, or Hope Forum. We were here in Shalit deal, that crazy deal, and we think that God gave us this role to stop and to save the people of Israel from another crazy deal. IDF soldier Gilad Shalit, kidnapped by terrorists in 2006, gained his freedom five years later in exchange for the release of more than a thousand, mostly Palestinian and some Israeli Arab prisoners. Included in that group, Yehye Sinwar, the Hamas leader in Gaza and mastermind of the October 7th assault. Only one terrorist enough to make October 7, as we saw. So that's the reason that we established Tikva Forum, because we have a different values and messages from the other uh, families. Ironically, months before the assault, Eitan and his father talked during a Shabbat meal about the deal leading to Gilad Shalit's release. Eitan told us that if he will be a hostage, he don't allow us to release him for terrorists. Dozens of hostages' relatives make up the Tikva Forum. Their motto? Only pressure Hamas for the release of the hostages, not the government. Israel must defeat Hamas, not only for the hostages, but for the other people of Israel, from the seven million and a half Jews here in the state of Israel. Moore gave prime examples from the 70s where Israel rescued hostages instead of making deals. They included high-profile events like the hijacking that led to the Entebbe raid, the PLO's attack of Tel Aviv's Savoy Hotel, and the attack and kidnapping of children on a field trip in northern Israel. Even so, he doesn't believe all the hostages can be rescued in an operation like we saw in early June. But Israel can press Hamas. Look, today we were giving Hamas a crazy humanitarian aid. It's not only bread and water, it's cigarettes and candies and pastries and everything. We can see all the, the markets in, in Gaza. So we have to make a crisis in Gaza. If we want to get our loved ones, I want them to, to beg us for, for a half, half cup of water and after they will give us our hostages, we have to continue to crush the Hamas. And he adds Israel must stay in Gaza and eventually resettle there, because if not, Hamas will only reorganize. They have only one target, destroying Israel. God gave us this country, and this coastline is our, like Tel Aviv, is our land. So we don't have to be shamed. This is our only state on the globe. Moore says it's all about the future of Israel, and that's what the Tikva Forum is. You must support the state of Israel, and especially Tikva Forum, because as hostages families, we are in the front of the war. I lost my job since October 7, and I'm a father of eight kids. He says America must stand with Israel for America's own good. We are fighting your war. These barbarians are on the way to Europe and to America. If you want to live, you have to stand with us. You have to help us to crush them here before they're coming to America. 
Julie Stahl, CBN News, Kfar Etzion, Judea and Samaria. Well, that's a story you're not going to see anywhere else. When you look back at the history that one Israeli soldier was kidnapped, held in Gaza, and in return for his life, Israel agreed to re release a thousand terrorists. These are people who had killed Israelis, uh, who have been convicted in a court of law of these crimes. One of them was Sinwar. And what he had done is he had killed four fellow Arab Muslims. And the reason he killed them is they had done some kind of deal with Israelis. And he thought that that was cooperation with the enemy. And because of that, you had to be executed. So he murdered them. He spent 20 years in Israeli prison. And what did he do at that time? He learned Hebrew so that he could get better at killing Israelis, that he could understand their communications, their intelligence. That's what he did with his time. When you look at that and that kind of ideology of hatred, that I am going to spend all my energy in the destruction of Jews, I'm, I'm going to kill them. We have to recognize that for what it is. It is the face of evil. And it was shown clearly to the entire world on October 7th. Let us all stand together that that kind of ideology has no place in the world today. We vowed after the Holocaust, never again. The, the world came together and said, no, this should never, ever be allowed to happen again. We have a, a group of terrorists. Uh, they're, they're fueled by horrible hatred and uh, an ideology that rewards that hatred. Uh, and they pay people for killing Jews. We have to stand against it and say, not on our watch. We vowed never again. We mean it. If you're going to take on Israel, you're taking us on too. And let us recognize that that ideology says Israel is the little Satan. America is the great Satan. So yes, we'll be the next target and they're gearing up for that as well. Now's the time to stand. Now's the time to say, no, you don't get to do this in our generation.